Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello and welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep right here on YouTube with me, Tom. Now in today's video, I am going back over and need to make a few corrections on my video, which was about the GoTech uh, floppy emulator device for the BBC Micro. Now in that video, I couldn't get the device to work properly on an original BBC Micro Model B, which I said was due to the floppy controller. Now, although this was actually true, it was also slightly incorrect, as a couple of you pointed out to me in the comments of that video. So I just want to give a huge thank you, especially to James Williams and Richard Broadhurst, who kindly got in touch to point out that they actually had these controllers working fine on their systems. And I needed to do a slight tweak to the firmware. Of course, I had no idea about this. I didn't really have time to do a lot of uh, research about the GoTex before I went in to do the video and that was my bad on my part I probably should have known about that beforehand however thanks to these guys and thanks to the rest of you on the community who also got in touch I've actually managed to get the GoTex to work on a Model P so that's what we're going to look at today so here we are again then this is a 1982 manufactured issue free BBC Micro Model B with the stock Intel uh, floppy controller and DFS that's disk filing system ROM version 1.20. I have the GoTech device wired back up into it. I have a one gigabyte uh, fat formatted USB stick. Uh, that's an old one, I just cleared it ready for use. Um, just showing underneath the unit. Oops, without doing that. So underneath we've got the Molex power supply that's connected straight into the BBC Micro's PSU and that gives the correct voltages needed to power a floppy disk drive. We have the ribbon which is a 34 pin ribbon for the disk drive connection, standard PC floppy ribbon basically. Uh, we also have over here a Raspberry Pi Zero which is plugged in something called the tube interface uh, via its GPIO pins. Now, you don't need that to make this work. That acts as a coprocessor. I've shown this on the channel before. Um, this one normally lives just underneath here, uh, giving this machine an extra boost of power and RAM, which is quite useful. So let's, um, let's just power up, make sure we're working okay. Yeah, so, the drive has initialized and it has come up. You see this actually loads up with 64K of RAM. I'll just show you that. And that's because the coprocessor was kicked in. So it's not normal for one of these machines. This is the 32K machine. But we're actually loaded up with uh, 64K. That's because the Raspberry Pi is adding the additional memory. Uh, we also have Acorn DFS. And if we go star and help, it'll show you what's actually on board, including, you can see here we have the DFS system, which is 1.20, 1 and the OS is also 1.20. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the USB stick out and we'll take that over to the Mac. You could use a Mac, PC, Linux, even a Raspberry Pi would do actually. We're gonna make a slight alteration to a .cfg config file, which is on this data stick. So I'll just show you the USB stick here mounted on the Mac. Here it is as USB 2. And here's the list of .ssd disk images that we put on the system last time. And down here we have a .ff.cfg file, which we'll open with, in this case, text edit for the Mac. But you could open it with a Notepad or WordPad on Windows, or I think even Nano under Linux would, would suffice for this. So, uh, so we've got this file open. Now, what I have added this time, which has made this actually work, is I've added index-suppression equals no. And I just want to show you this page from GitHub. This is the Flash Floppy software uh, used for GoTex, and I will put a link to this in the description of this video. So if we go down to the README, 
and it talks about uh, extremely configurable. And this then gives you the listings for the ff.cfg configuration file. And there's all sorts of different options. So you can pretty much get this to work with almost any retro computing system that requires a 3.5 inch floppy. So, and you see here, it says index suppression, yes or no. Um, and this line here where it says older systems may depend on constant index pulses, e.g. BBC micro. And that is why this didn't work the first time round. However, if we go back to our file again, if we now say no, it now works properly on the older Intel uh, floppy controller as seen on the original BBC micro model Bs. OK, so we've updated the data stick firmware, so I need to put this back in to the GoTech. And now let's see if it will now finally work. I remind you, this has the stock Intel floppy controller on board. So let's see if this works. OK, so I'm doing an optical screen capture, whereas I'm just pointing the camera to my flat screen TV. Normally, I do this through capture cards, but um, it can be a bit tricky with the old hardware, so it's just easier to do it like this. So, USB data stick is in. Let's just star dot, which should give us, and there's the first directory, which is hopper. What I actually want to do is I'm just going to flick through the files, and I know this one is number 16 on the GoTech. OK, so if we now start off again, there's Nanogangs. Now, those of you that are regular to the channel will know all about Nanogangs. It's my 8-bit game that I'm trying to run. So we know that's the uh, disk image that's loaded, so I'll just hit break. Now, I have the CoPro loaded. It's a second 6502. This machine is currently clocked, and it's running at about 200 and something megahertz, which is mad. This thing is meant to run at 2 megahertz. Um, very, very useful if you're writing a game in BASIC, because BASIC is notoriously slow on these old 8-bit hardware. So let's just shift break. And that's is working really well, bearing in mind, of course, that it's no faster loading off disk because it would have been a real floppy disk. So it's a little bit slower than the MMC card systems, but there we are. So we'll go new game. Select the first character. What I love it is just how smooth and how fast that now is. It's kind of insane. If you're interested in the development of this game, I'll put the most recent video about the building of Nanogangs, which has been one of those very long ongoing projects. Oh, a little bit glitchy. Oh. There we go. And I died. But yeah, that's actually working really, really well. We'll go to disk image 26, which is the last one on here. And this is when we put white light which is one of the more recent games that was released for the system from retro software uh, in order this work we need to turn our coprocessor off otherwise it won't work properly so it's fx151 or star fx151 comma 230 comma and then off is 14. If I press break and there goes back to being a standard BBC computer. And in fact, I can go control break. There's a hard reset. And you see we're now loaded with just 32K, which is fine. So we've got disk image 26 on the GoTech. And it is indeed white light. So I should be able to shift break. And hopefully this should also work perfectly now as well. And it looks like it is. I'm not going to be able to play this at all well behind the camera, but we'll give it a go.
We've also shown this game when it first came out as well, and uh, the graphics on it are really superb. It's a fantastic piece of work, and it's running at the native 2 megahertz speed as well, fitting inside 32k of RAM at 2 megahertz. You can also hear how squeaky the uh, mechanical key switches are on this BBC Micro Model B's keyboard. So there you are, it does work and it actually works really well and I'm just personally thrilled that it actually does work with the Model B, that makes it so much more useful and of course it now works if your Model B has an original Intel 8271 floppy disk controller on board with the original DFS either 0.90 or version 1.20 of the disk filing system ROM. GoTech with this slight tweak now works. Interesting, what also uh, came up in the discussion, this was from Richard, who uh, mentioned he had written a custom MMC system, a bit like the MMC card systems used with SD cards, but this one's actually for the GoTech floppy controller. It's free. I did have a little play of it. I haven't quite got it to work properly just yet, so we're probably going to need yet another video to uh, revisit that particular subject. But if you want to have a look, it's on the Stardot forum, and I put the link to it in the description of this video. So that's just about it. So thanks so much once again. If you haven't done already, please do like and subscribe to us right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. And I will see you real soon. Until then, thanks so much for your company and bye for now.